Hi, this is Shadi and today I'm going to talk about the importance of politics and how they shape a certain discipline. Uh, we often talk about the rules mainly for safety and taking the art to the next level, but this one I'm going to dive deep into politics, specifically how the rules were evolving all throughout the 20th century so i recently talked about the first rule set ever with the scroll and how kano sensei wrote it out to be but this time i'm going to talk about the evolution of the rules all throughout uh, like i said the 20th century and with the birth of the ijf and how it slowly took control of this and all in the name of spreading judo and also keeping it afloat on the international uh, stage basically because um, kano sensei wanted judo to be of japan also to be on the national stage and also he was a member of the ioc so he wanted to spread judo as far and wide as possible so uh, here we're gonna see a lot of the politics that played a role with uh, the involvement of judo and also uh, leading up from safety i'm gonna go through the rules from safety uh, all the way from like weight categories to penalties and all the way up to the infamous uh, leg grab ban and to see exactly why um, it was done and we're gonna hear it from the horse's mouth uh, one of the head instructors of the Kodokan I'm gonna leave it till the end of the um, footage or the video in order to really discuss it but at first I'm gonna discuss the birth of the IJF and also the evolution of the rules so uh, believe it or not uh, when it comes to judo contests the uh, red and white contest that was first hosted in 1884 it is still till this day uh, held every year at the Kodokan and it is the longest running competitive sporting event in the entire world so just keep that in mind even older than the modern uh, Olympics so uh, Jigoro Kano has studied the wrestling rules and also the old rules of jiu-jitsu matches that he would have have as while still studying jiu-jitsu so he implemented a mixture of both into his uh, basically the first draft of the rules and he became he came up with the um, first Kodokan red and white contest so these were the original rules but according to Roy Inman back in 1987 when Kano this is what he wrote Roy but when Kano took uh, direction or the control of the direction of the Dai Nippon Butoku Kai in Kyoto he became to became uh, to, he became a little bit more restrictive first of all in 1899 when he had that big uh, outrage about the leg locks he started banning stuff like finger locks uh, toe locks wrist locks ankle locks back in 1899 and he became a little bit more severe because there were still injuries uh, back in 1916 Ashigarami, of course, we all know this. I've talked about this a million times. Was banned, and also Do Jime, which caused a lot of kidney damage and internal organ damage, and also can be very dangerous on the ribs. So it's an indirect choke that can really suck the life out of you. Um, it was also banned in 1916. So the Kinshiwaza was officially born, like the list which made up Ashigarami and, of course, Do Jime. So. Um, there was still obviously even after that there were still a lot of injuries 1922 all leg locks were banned and 1925 neck cranks were officially banned and we still till this day have only arm locks and also the chokes that are allowed for the submission so uh, up until the 1970s uh, daki age which is the high lift that would have been a guard slam uh, was would score a pawn but even then like like as you see here in front of you you just lift and if you lift them above your shoulders and you stand up straight that's an ippon because technically in the real world you can easily power bomb them basically and just knock them out or severely cripple them so up until the 1970s it was uh an ippon after that it was just to lift the head and it was just mate like we have it now so this rule was obviously dropped for the possibility of dropping someone uh, from such a high point and really causing severe injury. So we are still in the process of uh, creating rules for the safety purposes. For safety purposes, later on, Kanye Basami was banned after Yasuhiro Yamashita 
just shattered his ankle, uh, which really put uh, a lot of danger on his uh, chances to win the 1984 uh, LA Olympics, but he actually did with an injured ankle, um, which is really formidable. So um, that was just for the safety reasons. Now let's talk a little bit about uh, more politics and how uh, they wanted to spread out judo, so they had to come up with more rules in order to keep judo alive on the international scene. So this is where politics really uh, took place so a judo match before that had no limits but then in the 1950s and the 60s they came up with a rule of maximum of 20 minutes so for example the 1970s world championship final lasted up to 15 minutes so after 20 minutes they would have been like ju judges call uh, in order to really decide uh, but also keep in mind back then stalling and gripping and not engaging etc there were no shidos so that's why they lasted that long so it was understandable it wasn't like as dynamic as today so if you go watch the old olympic matches from 1964 you would see that they were uh, at a far much slower pace so the judo be was becoming a little bit more mainstream and more popular uh, uh it was reduced to five minutes and now recently it's four minutes so in 1974 uh yuko and koka were added and also Shido was added for passivity, the hence why the matches got a lot shorter. So uh, in 2009, Koka was uh, eliminated and Shido became a warning uh, before it was started to score for the other opponents. So three Shidos, now today we have three Shidos and uh, it's Ippon or Hansuko Maki, I'm sorry. So and also the uh, Osai Komi also had a lot of modifications. Uh, before it was 32 uh, seconds and after that it became the 30 second rule but uh, in the 2000s there were a lot of studies being done at the Kodokan and they were realized they were realizing that the last seconds of the Osai Komi uh, no one got out basically or barely any so it was dropped down to 25 up until recently uh, the 2018 16 I believe 2012 uh, the 22nd rule um, and here we have like numerous changes already for uh, shidos for non-combativity and also the grips for example two on one grips across grips for too long belt grips for too long they were starting to add a lot of uh, rules against it just to keep it dynamic just to keep it afloat just to keep it uh, really intense and really explosive uh, judo for example you see someone grab a belt and it explodes explodes into the ippon etc that would make it far more interesting and bring in a lot more crowds and keep it on the international stage this has nothing to do with safety at this point so the all japan judo federation uh, recognized the contest rules of the kodokan judo uh, published by the kodokan and the international judo federation uh, adopted them when it was first created so when the ijf was first discovered uh, i'm sorry was first born uh, they adopted the kodokan's all japan judo federation rules and started to steadily and slowly creep up into the dominant uh, figure of judo so it was established and uh, as to put up the standards for international competition rules so the 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 main point was to put judo on the world stage to conduct world championships and also finally get it into the olympics so um, the first world championship was finally held back in 1956 and nine years later in 1964 it entered the first time as an Olympic game um, which really uh, started to increase the international influence on the rules and thus the IJF was starting to gain a lot more power when it comes to decisions about judo. So the major change in judo was of course introduction of weight classes before that it was just all open weight before the 64 olympics they added the 68 category the 80 and the plus 80 and of course you had the open weight category so after that it was expanded to six uh, weight categories including the open weight but uh, up until 1992 the open weight was still held until it was dropped and you had current 
seven weight categories, but they were a little bit different. For example, now you have 60, 66, 73, 81, and before that you had 78, 71, 65, 60, I believe. Um, for example, Koga, he was 71 and 78. Uh, so you see it's still a little bit uh, changing, so to speak. The World Championship would include the open weight in addition to the seven Olympic weight categories. So uh, there are still rules still being made. For example, 2003, the uh, Kawazugake was penalized and also the invention of the golden score. Um, and also they added two types. There were just only two types of penalties, Shido and Hansukumake. Before that, it was Shido, Chui. Keikoku and Hansukomake, depending on the severity, and also new bowing procedures uh, were implemented in advance of the new rules. So, um, this is why it was, uh, this is why like we always talk about the IGF rules, uh, why there's, there's so many rules, and uh, looked at with somewhat of a disdain, but here you see that they are inventing all these rules concerning the grips and uh, eliminating only Wazari and uh, Ippon, in my opinion, that's good because it keeps you in this uh, do or die mentality. In my opinion, you go for the entire way the Ippon. No one goes, no one throws to th to score a Wazari. That's just not in someone's head. That's just a backup plan in case it scores Wazari. I should go into other stuff like passing the guard uh, in case they wrap their leg around mine. And also getting to a psychomy or you know getting that but nobody goes to throw and just to score uh, a mediocre wazari they all want that ippon so in my opinion eliminating coca and uh, yuko is really good so and also it prevents stalling so here you see now finally when it comes to the leg grab this is uh, what mikihiro mukai one of the head instructors of the kodokan had to say about it え、え、このままでは、え、オリンピック種目として柔道が認められなくなるんではないかという危機感を持って so as you just heard uh, the leg grab ban, yes, obviously it has to do with wrestling, but not in the sense that people uh, say, we are, they often, you hear them say that people were coming and they were not engaging, they were just uh, wrestling, but that's not 100% uh, the case. This is, it was for them a matter of survival for judo, either it stays in the Olympics or it would be overtaken by wrestling. So in a sense, yes afraid of wrestling but not afraid of wrestlers they wanted judo to look like judo they wanted it to be um distinctive they wanted to be uh, in the olympics basically because kano Sen uh, that's what kano sensei would have wanted he was a member of the ioc he would uh, be at the opening ceremonies etc now my 100 percent with this uh, rule no do i understand it yes Look, I'm, I'm someone that trains judo for mental fortitude, self-defense, and to just be a, a more intellectual person rather than, you know, going and competing and also going to MMA and challenge all these people from all these disciplines. I couldn't care less about all those things. But uh, when it comes to technical heritage and history, I am very much passionate about this. So there is many fixes for this whole leg wrap thing but the way he said it that uh, now we are very much well received in the olympics etc and you have forums for example like greco roman wrestling that are starting to lose a lot of popularity in recent years i don't know about freestyle but i know at least greco roman is somewhat uh, 
suffering in the Olympics when it comes to popularity uh, because I think even judo is far more exciting you have the explosive uh, grip fighting you have the Seo Enages you have the Uchimata you have the Ashiwaza you have all these Sutemi techniques you have uh, Kansetsu like all the arm locks and the chokes and the pins so even with the ban of the grabbing below the waist for example here i would never condone such a thing so even with the ban of uh, legs etc it is still far more uh, versatile and far more richer than greco-roman wrestling and uh, a lot of the throws you see in greco-roman wrestling like the highlights like those big monumental ones yes they do happen but rarely go watch the olympics uh, matches in their entirety uh, of greco-roman you would see that a lot of it is just uh, like some hip toss uh, uki otoshi uh, various but like those big monumental like suplexes to the back yes they happen but not like those highlight videos you think that that's all greco-roman is in fact it is not and a lot of people just score points by just pushing someone out the surface it's it's not like what you see in the highlights that i've shown in the past so that's why it is uh, losing some popularity but judo it is getting increasingly popular so for its survival on the international stage, they did a good thing. But now let me tell you something about uh, the leg grab and also technical heritage and being uh, like, for example, Kano Sensei put the Gokyo that had all these techniques that you see in front of you. When we uh, do Nage no Kata for, uh, to get the black belt, we do uh, Kataguruma in the classical way. Uh, I believe that whenever you are tested in the Gokyo to go from belt to belt, uh, the techniques should stay and they should be done just uh, moving motion and also static from a static position. Um, that's how they should be done in my opinion. Uh, leave them in tests. And also another thing that we do in Judo is Newaza and Dori. We go down and we roll like you see them in Kodokan, you see them uh, in the uh, National Institute of Judo in Paris. We go there, we do Newaza all the time. All the randori starts on the ground, then we go to the stand-up. Yet, our competition is a bit different unless it's like uh, some a remote Newaza championship or Kozen Judo in remote Japan. But yet, we still practice Newaza like it's a priority. Why not uh, all test in leg grabs like the techniques so they wouldn't be lost and also maybe just this is a fun thought, something to think about. Just the last round of randori, whether it's like a big seminar or just normal class, call it the death round where everything is just, uh, you can just do anything. You can grab the legs. Uh, obviously, the kumikata, you still have to abide by them, like the rules, no 2 on one etc. But when it comes to grabbing the legs, you can do whatever you want. You can shoot, uh, you can do kataguruma, teguruma, you can do like uh, he did here. Um, you can do pick the knee, pick the ankle, just first of all, that's fun. And two, you will keep the technique pretty much alive, just like we do in Newaza, uh, but it's not our main priority. So the point is to just preserve them. That's the whole point. When it comes to me as Shandy, I want to preserve these techniques for technical heritage and history. But if it was for survival of the sport, okay, I understand that. And for self-defense, it is still... A big uh, a big art for self-defense regardless of the banning of the few techniques of the legs so I'm sure a lot of people can propose a million theory for red grabs but I always say this I'm no expert I'm no you know a lot of these people that were in the Olympics and World Championships they probably know better than me so hey what do I know but uh, at least Add it in some randori in class, just like we do Newaza randori. That's all I can say. So, uh, if you have anything else to add, let me know down below. Also, check out the link in the description below of Judo Info, where I got most of my information from. Um, and also, I got the clip from uh, Mukai that was from the Warriors of Budo. It was available before on YouTube. Now you have to purchase it. So, lucky I someone sent it to me, and I got to cut it and share this particular piece with you. So. If you have anything else to add, let me know down below. This was Shady, and thank you for listening.